The pain was the first thing to register. No sight or sound to accompany it. Just this ever-present sting through their body, building, screaming through their chest until it became unbearable, only to be quelled by a warm pressure over the wound. They must have stirred in response to the pain as they felt a hand on their shoulder gently encouraged them back into a lying position. Shh. You're always off still. Time was immaterial to a fae. It didn't flow in the same way as it does for a mortal, and they were cursed with much more of it. But even in this state, without senses, without activity, it was almost painful in and of itself. Did days pass? Did years? Did it matter? Both at the blink of an eye stretched into an endless horizon to a fae. A second could span a lifetime while you take a year to break for supper. They woke. Their bodies still stung, and their chest and arms were heavily bandaged. A variety of strange-smelling balms assaulted their nose and stained the bandages around the wounds. Memories of that night flashing before them as they tried to sit up and take in their surroundings. It was the elf's home. They were expecting a prison. They'd watched countless others be carted off for lesser crimes they'd committed in their name but instead they found themselves tucked into a warm bed, in their victim's home. Not even a watchman stood over them, ready to take them away the moment they awoke. The room itself was simple. A small bed, and table with a flickering candle beside them. The door ajar, leading to the study where everything had happened. And sat at the desk was the elven woman, grinding something in a mortar, before she turned and noticed the changeling awake, and moved over to sit beside them on the bed bringing a handful of the herbs she'd been grinding over, and a fresh roll of bandages. You should lie still. Being awake does not mean you are recovered. The changeling, for a moment, simply stared at the woman. What was she doing? Why was she helping them? They had come here with the others. Even if they had not beaten her themselves, they nonetheless were caught. Was this how the mortals incited the other to make their show of guilt? Was it so they would be indebted to her? Oh, great and terrible elf, I hath been caught. I am no more, for you would surely end my life here. Woe is my song for those who would hear it. I sing of my failures and of your greatness. Might I continue to live by your grace. Okay, um, I don't know what to do with that, so I'm just going to move past it and, um, redress your wounds. Is that not, uh... You've caught me. I've seen others imprisoned for such injustices. I assume that's why you've kept me. Do you not wish me to beg? You are no more a prisoner here than me. Although, I really wouldn't recommend that you get up for a stroll. You're still really... Really injured. All things considered, you should be dead if you were of this world. The changeling froze. They glanced down at themselves to be sure they still looked like the barmaid. This elf wasn't guessing they weren't of this world. They knew. Uh, how did you... Well, I'm no doctor, but I know where the heart is supposed to be. As uh, did they, I imagine. As she spoke, she began to remove and clean away the dressings on the changeling's chest, applying the herbs and wrapping new bandages around the wound. And yet you breathe, with no heartbeat to be found there, but instead, here. She moved her hand down gently to the centre of the changeling's abdomen. That, and I don't think I've ever seen someone with lilac eyes, which is a shame, really, since it's my favourite colour, but... Um... Then he went and did... whatever that whole display was. The changeling remained silent. Hmm. It matters little to me, and the world is full of oddities. I'm sure there are many who would find me very strange. The woman stood back up, bundling the old bandages and putting them to the side as she brought over a chair from the other room and sat back down in the bedroom, 
leaving the changeling to find a more comfortable position. The watch isn't after you. They'd made their way into the house shortly after you fell unconscious, and the others had already escaped. Although, they found one of them dead in an alley not far from here. I told them everything. That they had snuck in through the window while I was working, that they attacked me with intent to kill for what I saw earlier that day. I, um... <laughs> I had intended to inform the watch sooner, but I had a time-sensitive project and leaving it unchecked could have burned down my home. <laughs> the woman nodded their head towards the study, where a set of beakers and alchemists' tools were set. And I told them that I had a friend staying with me that night. And when she heard the commotion, she left to my aid, only to be beaten to unconsciousness and nearly killed herself. Why did you lie? Did I? You left to my aid, that's certainly true. I would call someone who would do such a thing a friend, and you've been staying with me for a number of nights now. A sly smirk crept across her face as she spoke. In truth, you saved my life. Regardless of why you were there that night, I knew then you weren't the same as those others. And it was only right that I repaid the favor. An equivalent exchange, if you will. <laughs> the changeling didn't understand what was funny about that last part, but felt a relief fall over them as the sense of danger dissipated. So, I'm afraid you're going to have to put up with me for a little longer while your wounds heal. Do you have a name? The changeling shook their head, almost shamefully. <laughs> well, it's only us here. If I'm talking, you'll know it's likely to you. My name is Ralva Kyvier. I have a bit of work I need to get done, but if you need anything, just call, okay? <laughs>